and it's headphones nail. to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a similar episode to last week, but with um, a little bit better updates and an expanded theory on one review from last week. So to jump right into it, um, I was originally only going to watch John Wick 2, or just John Wick 2, but I had some time and I ended up watching um, John Wick 3 Parabellum as well. And overall, I want to say that the John Wick sequels do something we usually don't see in sequels where they continue to expand on the universe but also have a good continuing storyline and good sequels that stay on par with the original film. So for example, the second film expands on th things in the first film like John Wick killing other assassins with a pencil um, and then we get the, you know, the introduction of... Um, Morpheus into this um, movie and then for example in the third one we have Matrix uh, quotes to play into that a little bit more as far as um, uh, John Wick saying he wants lots of guns and then um, um, additional iconic lines like John saying more yes um, telling Morpheus he could just give him a gun and things like that um, and then also a similar role as the Matrix where we have Morpheus kind of playing the guidance, or a teacher and a guider into the um, like the next mission, which kind of is a dual role for in that in the character aspect because Winston also does that. And then we have things like um, um, adding different um, characters that are, as far as different levels like the theme gangs, um, other characters, other people who know John, um, the adjudicator who um handles the consecration of hotels uh learning a little bit more about the high table and that there's a guy who sits above the high table so um overall good films is very interesting to the point where i do now want to fi uh, finish the series and uh, rewatch john wick 4 um which i don't know when i'm going to do that as of this recording just because um, as far as upcoming shows, we have House of the Dragon Season 2 starting um, this weekend, notably on June 16th, depending on when you listen to this episode. So the, between that and the Acolyte and then the video game uh, playthroughs, I don't know when I'll watch John Wick 4, but the plan is to rewatch that just to round out the franchise. But overall, good films, definitely worth watching, a lot of gunplay, a lot of gunshots. And it continues my, which I think they do it at least once in some form, but the thing that stood out to me again this time was John did something that's an anti-trope to me, where instead of throwing the gun down in anger, which he does do a couple of times, but in the scope of the character it fits, but he actually does the opposite of that um, at least once, where he runs out of ammo, but he still has bad guys to fight, so instead of throwing the gun down angrily, he throws the gun at the bad guy to disorient him and then ultimately take him out. So that's why it's one of those things where um, the movies hold up just because they take your usual tropes and they twist it up a little bit or play into it to ha have a good continuity or fit it into the film. So it doesn't stand out like a trope. You have actual functional cases for everything that's going on. Now, as far as um, the roller coaster tycoon level review for this week, um, so last week I did the Grand Canyon level in Wacky Worlds. So for this week, it, I did a time twister level, notably Rock and Roll, Flower Power, aka Wood, Woodstock. Now, this level was a bit of a conundrum because it's supposed to be one of the easier levels, but it did take me a couple of times to figure out what needed to be done. In or to the point where it was pretty easy to finish the level, but you have to go into it in a very, very particular way and with a plan. Um, the plan being that you do need to um, uh, continue to build um, uh, rides and attractions and things like that for people to keep coming in. 
but you also have to split the um, park into two sections. So the what I did was the immediate section with the cars and decorations. I used that for small rides, additional decorations, and a couple of bigger roller coasters, but nothing too big or extravagant. You want something exciting but not thrilling or scary. And then the second half of the park I used for bigger rides and a couple of other extra attractions to bring people over into that half of the park. So it's kind of like a, a yin and yang thing where the initial half of the park that the people see with the decorations are the easier side. You know, lots of restaurants and stuff, a lot of um, decorations, easy rides and things like that. And then the other half is for people who want to do more, they're still in the park and all of that. And then the other thing is is that you have to pay attention to the ticket prices. So if you keep the uh, ticket prices really low, then you're going to be awarded the best value um, park in a tr or best valued park with a lot of attractions. But the problem you're going to run into is that you're not going to have enough money to continue to build rides as time goes on. Because as you get more and more people, you're going to have a lot of people coming into the park, so you're going to make a lot of money but you're not going to be able to keep making enough money to keep building all those rides and attractions. So for me, I found the sweet spot around $30 to $35 and also using the various promotions for the park like free entry, promoting the park and uh, food attractions, promoting rides and things like that. And then also adjusting the prices up and down. So I did get up to $40, but I found that by, that, by the time you get above $35, people start to slow down as far as entering into the park so you can have promotions but no one's coming in and then you're not going to be able to make it to the 1500 um, um, attendance level that you need in order to um, build and finish the objectives of the park so for as long as you can keep the price at $35 so you're making as much money as possible people are coming continuing to come in and you can continue to build those rides, adjust them as needed and all of that because you're going to get a lot of people coming in. It's going to be easy to make the money, pay down your debt or keep the, your money at the same level and continue to build rides and attractions. Um, the other thing to do is first thing you want to do when you start the park is take out all those tents and stuff that are and those like signs or whatever that are there. And so when you do that, you get a little bit of extra money. You take out the paths on the back half of the first section of the park because you don't need that right off the bat. You want people to come into the park and then you need some, you need them to stay in the park. So early on, that just has people in the park wandering around, complaining about getting lost and things like that. So by taking out that back half and first building out the front half of that first section of the park, you get people to come into the park and then you can get them to stay because you've expanded the rest, the rest of that half of the theme park. So depending on how you plan it out, how you get people to come in, um, for me I cut it really really close that I didn't get to the 1500 um, guests until the very end but I kept the promotions going and towards the end I started lowering the price and ultimately people, um, I did make it over just in the nick of time. Um, the other thing to pay attention to is the um, dirtiness factor. So your guests will complain that there's a lot of litter and stuff. So make sure you build out trash cans. Um, or, or, as you get into later in time in the park, so year two, start building um, start building trash cans, hiring more maintenance workers to clean up the mess. So because you're going to start seeing a dip in the um, um, rating of the park rating. So you want to keep guests happy. So you know build out those. Uh, you know make sure you're cleaning up the paths and they're not going off to nowhere people are able to get around and stuff all your rides are being maintained and open so they're not stuck in line forever and ever and things like that so um with all that being said you should be able to get to the goal it is doable but for me it took a few times to do that because you know a couple of times i would run out of money so i couldn't keep building rides or the guests would say the paths are too dirty or they would be lost or I didn't have enough room to build on the first half of the park and so by the time I got to the second half I ran out of money. So things like that have to all be taken into consideration. So with that being said, um, as far as this week's Star Wars reviews, I had did. Um, I'm going to start with Knights of the Old Republic and then get into the Acolyte for the theory. But I continued my gameplay of Knights of the, of the Old Republic 2 so depending on when you hear this recording I've either just finished Dantooine or I'm still on Dantooine. So I've um, done the, the fields, I've gone to the um, administrator's office, and I've gone to the Crystal Cave, so or the Shirak Cave, whatever. 
gotten the various lightsaber upgrade parts, so I've up, I've gotten Revan's crystal to upgrade my or you know your character crystal to upgrade your character's lightsaber and then various other mods. So if you're playing Jedi from this or everyone is a Jedi, then you should have at least one or two extra lightsabers. So with the everything everyone is a Jedi mod, you can ha have other characters to um, use the lightsabers and force powers, so you can upgrade those. But if you have just yours, then you should have enough to upgrade your lightsaber. Um, I also have finished rebuilding HK-47, so now I'm taking him on all the various missions that I'm on. So I've upgraded him, given him various um, armor bonuses and um, droid upgrades and a couple of powerful pistols. So um, with that, I'm taking him around so I can get to the HK-47 or the HK factory later on in the game um, using the restored content mod. And then I've also finished the Jedi, the Ruined Jedi Enclave, so I've gone around and um, I've, you know, met the Disciple or whatever that guy's name was. I've um, taken care of all the, um, the looters and all those pe people's quests and all of that. So um, now that that's all been, been navigated and I've learned about the... Um, well, about where the Jedi Master on the planet is, it's time to go back to the cave and finish up Dantooine and finish up that mission. So I think I'm in a good place right now to be him a little bit more easily than usual, but we shall see. This Jedi Master, I think, is the one that always gives me trouble. Um, the other one that gives trouble, I think, is the one on Onderon, but he's not nearly as bad. I think that one is just... The, the Onderon one is just a protracted fight because he keeps healing himself if memory serves. So it's not that you can't do it because by that time they should have good health and regenerative powers and enough med packs. But with the Jedi and Dantooine, he's just a difficult Jedi Master to beat. So if you're doing him early, it's harder. If you don't have enough Force powers and other um, stats that are good enough, it's a very difficult fight. And I think the little trick to beating him as well, if you want to get around it easily, is to place a bunch of mines um, in your in that area where when he's right in front of you before you get into anything like you know before you find him and or anything like that you place all the mines and that way when you start the fight if you back up a little bit then he'll run into them and that'll take care of most of his health to make care or to take care of that a little bit more easily so um with that being said that's kind of the rest of the plan for Dantooine and then it'll be off to now I don't know if I'm going to do Korriban next or Onderon and Duxin I'll probably do that next so I can um because I don't think there's nothing as far as the Mandalorians go on Korriban, so if I do Duxin and Onderon next, then I can at least um, complete the quest of the Mandalorians um, by reuniting them from. I think there's some on there, so there's some on Dantooine and some on um, Nar Shadda. So if you, that's kind of just a fun side quest to reunite the clans. So um, I think I'll probably do that next before I do. Um, Korriban, just because the Shirak cave on Korriban, my that whole thing, and then the um, going down memory lane is kind of a weird. It's kind of a difficult thing, just because you're on your own. You have to go through the memories, and like it was kind of weird. Like it's kind of like the Jedi Master fight on Dantooine, where you can do it early on, but it's also weirdly difficult from my memory of it. So, um, um. I don't know, it's just one of those things where it's like weirdly difficult, but not really, so as long as you have the stats, then you should be okay, so I'm going to save that for later. So with that being said, um, I had a chance to watch episode 3 of The Acolyte, and overall I want to say that it was an interesting um, episode because we actually go back in time and meet, learn more about the sisters how they were born and a lot of their backstory so we learn that the twins um were born through the force via a night sister coven and they make note that um they that the magic isn't necessarily deal dealt with the force or they're not necessarily evil it's um the force is something to be used for and it's a tool like anything else so um with that being said i found it a particular note because we like i said that we learned that the twins were birthed through the force and they were raised by the nice sisters to keep them there and um grow the coven or you know be a part you know participants in the coven um but 
because we have we have a little bit of the brother and sister the mortis arc in here where we learn that the uh, one sister is more has more dark side tendencies and the other one has light side tendencies they have a divergent well, they have divergent paths where one wants to go with the jedi and the other one has inherent anger so overall interesting there but it feeds into the theory that i think we're gonna get a sith lore reveal in this um, show so I'm kind of hoping and I'm I would probably bet that we're they're gonna take the easy route where by the end of the ep season or yeah by the end of the season we're gonna get a reveal that the twins were either birthed through the force and um, Darth Sidious's master Plagueis learns about this and that's what sets him down the path of trying to extend his life through the force. Um, using this, um, using the twins as a basis, and that kind of is what starts Palpatine down the road of birthing Anakin through the Force, um, then the full Force dyad, and all of that stuff. So um, there's either that, or Plagueis, or his master Tenebris, which is a little bit more far out as far as theories go. But either Plagueis or his master Tenebris actually um, birthed the twins through the force um using night sister magic or just their abilities I i'd rather i would probably bet that it was night sister magic that did it they somehow wiped their memories or the night sisters were sworn to secrecy because they're more afraid of tenebris or plagueis instead of the jedi so um because of that experimentation they were the twins were birthed through the force and that's what started um Tenebris and or Plagueis down the road of extending their lives through the force either through cloning extending their own lives manipulating midichlorians and all of that stuff so um with that being said that's kind of where I'm hoping we end so I think we're, I or if I were to bet I would um bet that we're gonna have Plagueis by the end of the season he's a secretive mysterious um Sith Lord who will show up probably in the last episode or two probably just the last episode but towards the end of the season um because he the twins got separated he was hoping to keep them there and, instru and instructed the night sisters to keep them there and um because they were unable to do so he either takes them out or now now he has to reunite them to finish his trials wanted to see how they grew up see if they would have these divergent paths or be true twins where they both stay on the same side um same um light or dark side affiliation or something like that and see how it goes from there so that's all there is for this particular episode so if you have any questions comment feedback or anything like that you can comment on the post on social media all of the sites i'm on are linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews gameplay videos are up on the youtube channel at youtube.com slash patel n01 and of course, as a supporter on the Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01, you get early access to the show, a link to the YouTube version if you want that version, um, commercial free version of the show, and all of that good stuff. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next